we got a great show for you today. We are going over all the incredible football from this weekend, and we're going to look at what the truth is about not the top 10 quarterbacks, but the next group. Were there any good players that you might want next year, or were they all like Aaron Rodgers, who sucked? Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and enjoy. This is Kyle Yushek from the San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. <laughs> Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Andy, Mike, and Jason, back with you Tuesday, January 24th. Another Truth episode of the show. Talking quarterbacks today, Deucer's Alley is full of deuce. Herbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the Borgogan still swagging out with his Falcon shirt. You've got the Judge. Sitting in the middle, trying to keep those two apart. Uh, they've been in a kind of a fight ever since they... Just always fighting. Ever since Kyle made uh, Al wear the Borgogan mask on the <laughs> shame episode. And got away with the uh, the delightful sleep mask. Yeah, and then like an uh, owl. Al is here in all black again, just blending in. What? Yeah. He's wearing all black again? I'm surprised. He's going on a cruise here pretty soon. A little vacay. And uh, he normally spices up the, the wardrobe just before the cruise. Just to make sure, I, I'm assuming that things fit and everything. Yeah, they don't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tried, oh. tried to sp spruce it up a little this morning. Yes. <laughs> oh, you tried. Man. You tried this morning. That is so great that this came out on the show unexpectedly. Because oh. you're 100% right. Every time he goes on a cruise, we yeah. see him that you week up. You see him teasing the and cruise. He, and he is in full, yeah. you know, yeah. Hawaiian tourist yeah, Margaritaville, mode. you know. And is <laughs> it's because it didn't fit. <laughs> oh, you fair? Well, well uh, <laughs> we love you, Al. Oh, another wonderful. Ep you need the vacation. I think that's what we're learning right here, right now. That's you, right. You need some time. <laughs> um, <laughs> I need an all-you-can-eat buffet. <laughs> that's, what, that's what you need. Yeah, for seven days. Yep. That's right. Um, thank you for joining us today. Excited to have the crew back together. A couple of things at the top before we get into the divisional round and and uh, hop back into the truth about the fantasy quarterback position with some interesting names today. Uh, number one, if you could do us a favor, <gasps> just a couple clicks. I mean, it, it might as well be a tiny trumpet. <laughs> there, I was waiting to see what I'd get. FootClanVote.com. Uh, we've been nominated for the uh, FSGA's award for best social media content. That's the Fantasy Sports and Gaming Association. This is new and different than the recent Foot Clan vote you might have done oh, yes. a couple weeks ago. And Andy and I will be in Vegas to receive this award, so we expect yeah. to receive this award. Right. Otherwise, what are we doing there? Right. And no pressure, Foot Clan, but this award has, uh, award has been in existence for three, four? three or four years, and has been won by the fantasy footballers each and every year. My, so, what Mike's saying is the dynasty's on the line. That is correct. Yeah, footclanvote.com. And then Jason is wearing, if you're watching on YouTube, the brand new uh, brand new Foot Clan title shirt. Yeah. Which, it's nice. Thank you. Not nice seeing you wear it. Well, it feels great. Let me tell you, if you want a comfortable shirt that's going to make you feel good, this is it. Yeah. I mean, you want If you won your title, uh, go get it. Yeah, I, I'm afraid we're gonna have to see that a lot over the next calendar year i got five of them so oh, one boy. for each uh weekday good good <laughs> so that's shopballers.com if you want to check that out uh nickname shirt is up there as well our quick question takeaways reactions from the divisional round it was a fun weekend many times i think this is my favorite weekend yes. of the playoffs because you get multiple games on saturday multiple on sunday uh some really entertaining games. Uh, the Chiefs knocked off Jacksonville. The Eagles trounced the Giants. The Bengals trounced the Bills. Yeah, I mean, they, they did. 
Lowest scoring game of the year for Buffalo. Uh, something that, look, they dominated them from the beginning to the end. And this was one of those things, Joe Burrow talking after the game. Like, he said it. <laughs> He's just yeah. like, offense, defense, special teams, we dominated from the beginning to the end. And it was, and then he said, uh, next week will be fun. One of the best guys here, one of the best guys there, offense, defense. It should be a great repeat of last year's uh, AFC title game. Yeah, Joe Burrow has my favorite swag in the league. He has exactly the right amount where he is so kind of – he's puffed up. He's just so confident, but it, but it's it doesn't go too far. It doesn't go to where you hate the guy. It doesn't go to where it's, well, it's undeserved. Well, sure. I mean, some people are going to hate Joe Burrow, especially dependent upon what Joe Burrow did to you and your beloved teams, but – I just, you know, that that quote a couple of weeks ago when he was talking about, you know, he was asked about the window. Is right. the window going to be closing soon? He's like, the window's my whole career. The window is always open. I just love his confidence. Yeah, I was telling you guys today, Jamar Chase is 22 years old. So <laughs> that window's going to be open for a while. The breeze is going to be coming in. Yep. Uh, and then the 49ers, they, uh, they took care of it. They took care of the Cowboys. Unfortunately, Tony Pollard. Yeah. In this game, fractured his fibula, needs surgery for it, is a free agent. Uh, Jason mentioned here in the studio, this may be the one path to him. You know, it has to increase the likelihood that he would return to Dallas, especially as we've seen Ezekiel Elliott really degrade from a production standpoint. They've already, at least the, the whisper from the bushes have already floated the franchises in play. The franchise tag for Pollard. Oh, I could. That makes perfect yeah. sense. Well, the, it sucks for Pollard. I think I it could think be great though. I mean, he needs money. The truth That's money is that they might not need that anymore. I mean, they're going to let him maybe test that maybe. open market, and I don't know that he's going to get a giant payday now coming off of this injury. And if that's the case, if they can bring him back on a reasonable deal, uh, you know, th that's where if you are the Tony Pollard manager, there's there's the temptation to say man, I hope he goes out and becomes the dude for a new team. And I don't think that's his best fantasy output. I think his best fantasy output is staying on the Cowboys as the he, best dude on the Cowboys. Yeah, exactly. As, as Zeke gets older and slower, just let Pollard continue doing what he did this year, only more. And this is a, uh, at least I haven't heard anything about this injury that would indicate uh, a complexity level that would be on the on par with it, you know, an ACL yeah. tear. That's why I think he'll he'll still get the whatever offer he was going to get. I think it'll it'll still be out there for him because it's he'll the, the I've heard that the three month timeline that's been floated has been kind of an optimistic timeline, but he'll be good to go once the season starts. And he's he he has enough tape. That he's a sensational player. Yeah, Beth said for for an athlete to return to you know pre injury performance, it's usually going to be about nine months. So you're talking about uh, really close to the start of the season, where when he's out there, he might make it to week one, but he might not be at full strength. We see that a lot, where it'll take him a couple of weeks into the season, maybe a couple of months into the season before he's at full strength, not necessarily finally able to do activity he'll be able to do activity before then 49ers play the Eagles on Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern Bengals Chiefs is the night game looking forward to it yeah and I uh, think who, uh, did you both have Buffalo to win at all or was that just Jason uh, I have uh who do you have I had Chiefs Eagles okay so and you're Chiefs still winning still in play yeah, there. my final tour in and honestly like one of my bigger takeaways here from just these four games, small sample, but like this is the highest of uh, highest level of competition for the NFL. It, you need to have two wide receivers on your team, uh, like or or have Patrick Mahomes. I mean that that certainly kind of covers things up when you As have, you say you can have zero if you, you have Patrick Mahomes when you, when you have the best quarterback in the league and the, the one of the best offensive coaches. You could call him the best, but whatever for Andy Reid. That certainly changes the the narrative, but it's like the Eagles have two dominant wide receivers. Devontae Smith is playing out of his mind. Like they're both, they're both ones outproducing AJ Brown. Uh, the Bengals, even though T Higgins didn't have the monster game, like it's just it changes what the offense can do. Where the Bills, Diggs isn't I mean, enough. Like just when when you run into an elite defense playing as hot as the Bengals are playing. 
having just Stephon Diggs is not enough. Well, that that statement in and of itself is one against Gabe Davis. Yes, yes. it is. Yes. So the the future for Gabe Davis and the consistency of Gabe Davis, and I'm sure we will look at him on the Truth episodes, but it wasn't there this year, and he did not step into uh, the big boy pants. No, the opportunity that Gabe Davis had is what was as good as it gets, even to fruition. The targets he had, the amount of you know the, the whole season, he could have been something really special. He did not step up into that next level of. I'm here to dominate. I'm here to be, you know, a great wide receiver too for the team. That was just a guy that really let Josh Allen down too often. He should have been a contested catch king. And instead it was like if a defender can really get in there, he's going to knock it away. That's what it felt like. Yeah, and obviously San Francisco, they have uh, Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, uh, George Kittle, uh, similar to the Chiefs, you know, where, where Kelsey is a centerpiece of the passing offense. They use their running backs, both of those teams. Use the running backs like a wide yep. receiver many times. And the Cowboys had C.D. Lamb and nobody. Uh, you know, they, they really needed someone else. Michael Gallup didn't get it done. And what's what's really sad is thinking about, I think the Cowboys could have been a Super Bowl winner with Amari Cooper on this team. Their, their defense was good enough, but their offense just missed another option. And they well, let and then Cooper went out to Cleveland and, and balled yep. out in tough situation with different quarterbacks. So, um, yeah, Cowboys fans are left uh, – in the same boat. Yeah, yeah. Hey, how long has it been since they've been in a title game? You mean uh, like the, the NFC, NFC champion? Championship game? Is that 90s? I would, I mean, do you, do you, I would think Kyle, so. Kyle, do you know off the top of your head? I'll look it up. They won it in 95, so that's the last I time they won. I think that's the last time they were in the title game, legitimately. I think so. Yeah, I mean, our, our resident Cowboy fan there in the middle. <laughs> Are you just numb at this point, Brooks? Like, do you have any – were you watching with hopes and expect, expectations or just – I was watching. You were watching, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, okay. I didn't. I thought they would get upset last week against the Bucks. So, and what do you think of moving, uh, shifting Zeke to center? Do you think that that's an option? <laughs> uh, maybe was, avoid that. What was that play? Uh, that play was so much fun and so funny. It looked like a comedy movie. Like the execution of it, yes, just was so great at the end. And I love your tweet, Andy. Like people are so upset about that play. That there is no play that was going to work at that situation. Why didn't so it she does... call the good one that was going to score? <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't matter. So I'm so happy they went with Zeke at center. <laughs> Had him just get mauled because he's not an offensive lineman, and then throw the ball to a guy that gets immediately tackled. It looked like high schoolers playing against the college team. It was just, it was a lot of fun. I think we ran that play in our flag football league at one point in time. But no, the uh, the Forty ers you know, they've got a task here going into Philadelphia. It's going to be very difficult trying to put up enough points against Philadelphia on the road. It's gonna. This is the time where it's gonna be on the back of Brock Purdy, and you're going to have to try. And he play, he's playing good football. Yes, but you're going to have to put sustained drives together against Philadelphia. But yes, yesterday Brock Purdy would not have beaten the Eagles. No, I don't think so. No, and uh, you know he didn't get a lot of help. I mean, CMC played through a calf injury. Uh, you know, it'll be it'll be interesting. Cincinnati's going to have a lot in their corner going against Kansas City with the Mahomes injury, the ankle injury where he may have limited yeah, mobility. That part sucks so and much. And the Bengals are they're on fire, right? I mean, yeah. these, these this, there was not a big gap between them and the Chiefs in the regular season. The Bengals are 12 and 4, Chiefs 14 and 3. The Chiefs have lost 3 straight games against these Bengals. The Bengals have their number and now you have a uh, an injured Mahomes is going to be very very difficult to beat these Bengals. They are so good right now. Yeah, well, we'll uh we'll be watching. That is for sure, along with the Cowboys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, into the truth we go. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers. I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Do you know how many times, Mike, I'm going to have to watch that video graphic? A lot more. Of me in that wig, which I don't I don't think I looked that good in that wig. You don't? No. I thought it looked better. Yeah, yeah I, well. Uh, I'm just saying you should give it a try. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll think about it. That could be a – I'm sure I'll get shamed another 50 Ooh. to <laughs> – Nice yeah, powdered wig. Hey, uh, wow. Yeah. You never went the judge wig. No. No, the old and then the – What, the, what are the they? Snuff? 
whatever the was the powder. I, I don't God, remember. What, what are you talking about? You're on your own here, no, bud. I'm back, trying to help you, but back, I don't know what you're talking about. Just back in the day where they Oh, had, they'd put the powder on? No, no, though they would uh I think they would snort that powder. <laughs> this is the new information. Hey man. History class. You're yeah. talking about the the old powdered wigs. No, no, no. No, I'm I'm just talking about that time period. You're saying you're saying that the founding fathers had huge cocaine problems. I hear no, you. No, but it was no, no, it was not that. It was something else. Okay. I'll look into it. All right. We don't need you to look into it. I yeah. mean, at this point, we kind of need don't. to know. <laughs> All right. Into the truth we go. Last uh, last episode, which was last week, we talked about the top 10 finishers. We're looking at the uh, top final scores in total fantasy points. Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Joe Burrow, Geno Smith, Justin Fields, Kirk Cousins, Trevor Lawrence, Daniel Jones, and Jared Goff. So we're into the second episode on quarterbacks. Um, you know, we talk about this statistic every single year. There were 45 different quarterbacks that had top 12 performances. That is the second most over the last decade. This is part of the foundational argument of how you can get by with a streaming quarterback is just the sheer amount of quarterbacks that participate. They have opportunities. So many teams going turning to backups or even third options this year. Um, but we're diving into what we view as the truth about these players. And this second group is very interesting because there are a number of names that obviously were in the top 10 finishers last season, players that weren't there because of injury. And we're looking at how many great games did they have? How many good games? Great games are 26 or more points. Good games are 21 or more points. Bust games, how many times did they actively hurt you? 15 or fewer points. So, um, you know, the next two guys on this list, one of the reasons they're here is because their offenses did not challenge defenses down the field. They settled for the short stuff, or as Michael called it, the short snuff. Uh, I found out what it is if you want to talk about I, it. All right. It was, a, it was a tobacco. But they'd snort it? Yeah. Wow. And you knew this? Yes. And it was so, called snuff? Yes. Okay. okay. All right. Well, now you know. Now the <laughs> like world if you knows. ever if you ever see you need uh, to kind of dumb uh, down the level of joke to to kind of more common history. I I apologize. I thought this was a common thing that people deucers, do. Deucers, deucers. Were you in on the snuff uh, knowledge? Yes, I have. So, yeah. So, yeah. All That's right, my man. Cru like, cruise line knew what was like going on. Like if you're on. ever watching a period piece and where back in the time where they would wear the wigs and you see they open up like a little box, they they snort something and then they they have a sneeze. <laughs> Apparently it was tobacco. That's a good time. Brooks, were you in well, on Well, I don't know if it's a good time. <laughs> no, nah, I don't no, I was not. Kyle. I've heard of this. Yeah, sure. Mike's not crazy. All right. Justin Herbert is at eleven. And um it was just a real I can't believe he's here. It was a really bumpy ride for Justin Herbert and the Chargers. I, look, I had him on several fantasy teams. And he was one of the biggest reasons that I had some teams struggle because he you had to pay third round price for him. And I can tell you from watching, my observation of both of these next two guys was every game felt like you were just hanging on for dear life. You were kind of kicking against the goads. You were constantly wanting vintage Justin Herbert, and yet every drive felt like pulling teeth. It was never – and and it makes sense because if you're checking the ball down, he was 31st in average depth of target, okay, despite completing the third most completions in NFL history – that's wild. It, it feels that way when you, if you are barely throwing the ball, short completion, short complete, you have to put so much together to get all the way to the red zone. It's not coming quickly. And so Keenan was hurt, yes. Mike Williams was hurt, yes. But what were your takeaways here? He was the 17th in terms of our truth data, which looks at that consistency level. He was 25% good games, 6% great games. That is not like Justin Herbert. No, and that's certainly not like anyone that you should be drafting in the third round. If you're drafting a quarterback in the third round or higher, you have to have great games, weak winning performances, and he just didn't provide those very often. I think two really good games over the course of the entire season, not going to get it done, and it was very frustrating. There's a big question here, because their offensive line was, was okay. It was not as 
terrible as some of these quarterbacks thrust into a position where they are going to um, have to check it down immediately or is going to be lying on his back. They certainly dealt with injuries and had certain periods of the, the season. But the question to me was, is this a scheme problem? And they have fired their offensive coordinator. They are in the search right now for a new one, and they're going to have better developing routes down the field. The reads will be, you know, uh, challenging the defense. Or was this Justin Herbert just taking layups too often and really being afraid to to push the ball down the field? Now, I, I don't understand why either one of those would happen, given what we saw the previous year. I think you have a couple of good explanations for why that would have happened, though. Please. Well, I mean, the, the absence of weapons is one of them, right? Like They, they didn't have Jalen Guyton. He was a downfield threat. They didn't have Mike Williams for parts of the year and Keenan Allen for parts of the year. But in the games when, when Keenan was there and Austin Eckler was, uh, Eckler was there and Mike Williams was, was there and we were waiting, like, oh, the matchup is good. He's got all of his weapons back. He, he just did the same stuff. Yeah, I mean, I think it was it was kind of what the offense built without those weapons, and they didn't. You know, it's one of the reasons they fired Joe Lombardi is that he did not adjust. And, and uh, you had the rib injury in week two for Justin Herbert. Um, our injury expert, Matthew Betts, he came out that week and said, look, these things can linger and they may start planning quick passes. And, um, you know, they liked a, what they saw. I think that there's something to be said about, and I'm look, you're a Gabe Davis fan. You were before the year. I'm a Mike Williams fan, but there's also something to be said that those guys don't didn't step up either. You know, Mike Williams is a player that will be very difficult for fantasy managers to evaluate for the future. Sure. And Gabe Davis is in that category as well because you've seen them both make huge plays, but then somehow these guys cannot be part of a game plan. The best players in football, they're always part of the game plan. They're not you don't erase them. And we had games where Mike Williams was gone, yeah. nowhere to be found. I mean, that that's been his whole career, too. He, he got the big bag of money, but he just he vanishes multiple times throughout the season. So um, I also think that Justin Herbert is the cautionary tale against drafting someone like Joe Burrow next year, very very high. Joe Burrow can be great. Uh, Justin Herbert can be great, but when you don't add any rushing volume, rushing touchdowns to your fantasy output if the touchdowns the passing touchdowns don't come I mean Austin Eckler happened to get just again a million you know touchdowns on the ground those just destroy Justin Herbert's fantasy production on certain weeks and so if you aren't a mobile rushing quarterback what do you have like I think sub 150 rushing yards this season then I, I'm not going to spend high, high draft capital on you unless you're Patrick Mahomes yeah I mean it's a, it's a good point to make because you look at those top finishers I think Burrow's in a slightly different category. When you have multiple elite weapons, yeah. like you could easily Agreed. make the argument that the Chargers have none. Like Keenan Allen's not a Jamar Chase type of player. Correct. And Mike Williams is not. So, you know, I think there will be a little bit higher baseline for a guy like Burrow. Um, but look, look at the top finishers. I mean, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Justin Fields, you know, even Trevor Lawrence runs the ball a little bit more or is a threat around the goal line. So you're always gonna run run that risk. We talked about it. M Matt Ryan had elite weapons, right? He had Julio Jones and Roddy White in the beginning of his career. And he had some up seasons, some down seasons in terms of total touchdowns. So can definitely happen to Burrow. Um, it happened to Justin Herbert this year. And he only had two top five finishes. He was a lock for those last year. So it was a, it was a bumpy ride. I don't think anybody thinks Justin Herbert really isn't still the guy. No, he's a great quarterback. That's, that's why I comp... The, the Joe Burrow comp. Joe Burrow's fantastic. So is Herbert. But if touchdowns get ran in more than you want by running backs and you're not participating in the running game, then it's it's just going to be up and down. It's going to be like Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan had great fantasy years, and he had terrible fantasy years. It's it, just what you get with a pocket pass. It is funny, too, because Andy Reid changes that game for Mahomes. He does so many creative things inside the 10-yard line. Even the tap passes that go to Mahomes, yep. yeah. they're runs. But, All hey, the let's give you the stat. Yeah, there's there's 10 tap passes or shovel passes every year that are basically handoffs at the goal line, but they count as a passing touchdown for Mahomes. Which, real quick, on the, on the tap passes, I mean, thinking about just the, the overall 
you know, like the logistics of the play, it is it has to be much safer to hand the ball off. Yes. Right? Like it, it, it feels like Because that, if a drop happens with, it's an incomplete pass? Well no, I'm saying like the the timing that that is a factor, I guess, of if you if you screw up the exchange that it's then technically an incomplete pass. But I'm saying holding the ball out and letting a player grab it feels so much safer for the play to execute than than actually tossing the ball into the oh, air. Oh, you're saying that it's not safe. Right. And so like when they when they introduce that, I maybe the incompletion is a part of it, but how is how you how is part of it not like Mahomes going, you know, uh if we do it this way, I get yards. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's maybe just, Andy Reid's just as benevolent as he seems. Maybe. Uh we'll get into a couple uh names here. The old guard in just a minute. Tom Brady comes in at number 12 on the year. I don't remember what adjective you used, Jason, to describe Tom Brady's season before the show began, but it was a good one. Do you remember what you said? I think it was uh, he sucked. Uh, I, now, I could be wrong. I could be misremembering. But I think I, it was useless. Uh, uh, I think useless season for fantasy. Thesaurus it up because... You can't say useless. You're saying just because of Week 17? Because w when Week 17, you're the number one overall quarterback. Not that people were... A ton of people were playing Tom Brady, but there were people playing Mike Evans if and the, company. If the boy cries wolf, uh, what, 16 straight hey. times in a row... Not, no one helps him the seventeenth time, Mike. Uh, you you tell that to my championship ring, my friend. <laughs> you two, you saw this in the votes. You are you. Both of you happened to play Mike Evans in week seventeen. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, yeah, but you were very very alone on that bandwagon. Kyle was Tom Brady useless. No, I died because of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not arguing he was useless. I'm arguing that if he was on your bench, he was useless. Which um, if he was on your bench, you were making the right decision. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but Tom Brady, let's get back to it because he finished at 12 in total points scored. And one of the reasons we bring up these names in this order is because you'll be hammered with player ranks all off season. You will see. You, you know, you'll get away from football. The the Super Bowl will be over. You'll take a few weeks off, and then you'll come back to things whenever it is. June, July, August, maybe you're with us and maybe this is not you. But for a lot of people, you'll come back to these numbers and you'll go, oh, man, Tom Brady was a QB1. Okay, let's pick him up. He'll be better than that. And we will be uh, we'll be victims to this, too, in some regards. You know, there are times on the show when we'll be like, you know, Tom Brady, he's always a, he's been a quarterback one all of yep. these years in a row or whatever the case may be. This was a player who was 19th in our in our truth, consistency, data he was great six percent of the time he was good 13 percent of the time that's a terrible number it's i can't even believe it and you're talking about not making a difference every time you started him unless you started in week 17 i mean that's the real yes. honest truth of tom brady if and i uh, say and on top of that he got you or i say he got all of us where the season opened it was brutal He with a, a matchup on the road against Dallas. And you're like, oh, no, Dallas is a good defense. He's struggling. And then you get to weeks four and five. Kansas City, quarterback four. Then he's the QB seven against Atlanta. And it's, oh, no, Tom Brady is – he's still got it going on. He, the mojo is still there. He can, he can be a good fantasy quarterback. And tricked you <laughs> – if you went back in and waited and waited for it, it was – just mediocrity that single game where he scored 25 fantasy points was the only game before championship week where he crossed 20 <laughs> fantasy points 20 fantasy points is kind of my natural standard of whether I'm happy with the quarterback when I'm when I'm playing fantasy football I I'm wanting 20 points from my quarterback every single week I'm looking right. at the matchup trying to stream the right guy or hopefully have a good quarterback and that is kind of like I need that and and he only did that twice on the course of the entire season. He did not help you. He was putrid. That's the truth of Tom Brady's fantasy season. And that was two total times more than our next quarterback. <laughs> yeah, Brady, by the way, just oh, like no. Herbert, they fired their offensive coordinator after this season. 
And these were the A dot leaders, right? Or I guess you would say the last place uh, finishers in terms of throwing the football down the field. They both had a million completions. None of them were worth nothing. Brady will be forty six years old. Is he a buck next year? No, no. Okay. I think he'll be. Um, I think he will play though. Like I, I think he'll play football. Um, but we'll see. It could be in Las Vegas. Aaron Rodgers oh, is the next man. name on the list. Jason, you just said there were zero times this year. Let me count That's them not a lot. real quick. Yeah. No, uh, zero's the total of how many times he scored 20 fantasy points this season. If you want to understand the deception of an end of season rank compared to their real performance, Rodgers was 13 on the year, and yet he finished 27th in consistency, 0% great, 0% good, 47%. <laughs> bust are we sure on this number is this true <laughs> a good game yeah i mean basically what we're saying is a good game for our metrics is yeah, over 21. 21 and so he never even hit 20 he never helped you win a single time there are weeks where you know a, a lot of teams are on by and maybe he snuck in with you know I, i'm looking at week seven week seven he was the quarterback 12 okay who's a quarterback one he scored 15 fantasy points that's yeah, that's what matters. Week. That doesn't yeah. the finish doesn't matter. The fifteen matters. Yeah, I mean, he just was terrible the whole season, and I think towards the end of the season, we started having conversations about the matchup is good. We can we trust him and going no, like I, once once you've I wouldn't seen do it, it. I'm proud of that. I would not <laughs> no, do you, it. You you stood up for the truth, and the truth is, um, Aaron Rodgers. If it, his name is the only reason you ever would have played him. He never helped you the entire season. And so now the question is, going forward with his future, we don't know for sure if he's going to play. Uh, apparently, it, there is, you know, some people that are in the know think there is truth to him maybe orchestrating a trade and playing for some other team next year. Wow, that uh, seems very difficult with the new contract. Yeah, I mean, well, he's only, and he's only got one year left on it, I believe, so... We don't know, but um, if if he comes back to the Packers next year, there's going to be a lot of hope, right? Christian Watson, year two, looked great at the end of the year, but I'm I'm not buying in. I just, for the fun of it, looked at age 39, Phillip Rivers, and he was more helpful for your team than age 39 Aaron Rodgers. Threw for 500 more yards in his age 39 season than Aaron Rodgers. And so, um, literally, almost every quarterback in the league was more helpful. I mean, we've got him at twenty seventh for our yeah. kind of true score. Twenty seventh. There's thirty two total starting quarterbacks, and he was as bad as it gets. All right, now we're going to jump into Lamar Jackson. Uh, talk about him, and then Tua. Lamar came in at fourteen, but his consistency rank was actually five in the games that he played. Forty two percent good, seventeen percent great, thirty three percent bust. Um. Bit of fool's gold at the top of the year. Played Miami, and then what was it, New England? Yeah. And that game, I remember that game. That was wild. Uh, I think both of those, he had a huge rushing, rushing. touchdown. So this is, you look, we have gotten to the point with Lamar Jackson where I think we know the truth. It's not the, the MVP season in 2019. That's not the truth of Lamar Jackson and what you can expect. You can get that on a week with Lamar Jackson because yep. of the rushing totals. But now you, you've got two consecutive years for Lamar Jackson. 12 games played in both of them. That's a concern. Finished outside the top uh, 12 at the position. So, again, when you have him, that's great. But if you don't have him, you don't get those numbers. Uh, another team that really – they could have screwed some things up, I think, by losing Hollywood Brown. Rashad Bateman – Got hurt and really wasn't Hollywood Brown level to start the year. Well, that was, and you look at you know Dak's situation. They could have used another target in the wide receiver room that wasn't named Sammy Watkins or Deshaun Jackson. I think that was honestly that was the biggest problem for Lamar Jackson is those first few games. Even though Bateman wasn't doing you know like huge, he had a huge touchdown reception in one of them, I believe. But you had someone who the defense actually had to be nervous about getting down the field and making a huge play. The fact that they had no one else to go to, especially after Rashad Bateman got hurt, I mean, it was just – it. Will, the snowball just w went down the mountain after that for Lamar Jackson. But at that point, I mean, I had – me and Kyle had Lamar in our league of record team. And it was, how do you not play 
Lamar Jackson, who is capable of putting up 40-plus points on a week for a streaming option where you're like, I hope my streamer gets me 21. It's It was it, it was the trap of of Lamar, the trap of Kyle Pitts, like some of these guys where they're you know that the ceiling is just is so is is so high and weak winning and you couldn't possibly move on. If the Raven first of all the Ravens have to figure out how to get him uh back. I guess you can franchise him, but then the way that things are going at least in the social media of if they franchise him, will he come back and play? He's not pleased. He wants the guaranteed money that Deshaun Watson got. That quarterback contract broke a lot of things, uh, I think, for for the NFL. So if they don't get that figured out, number one, is Lamar even on the team? Then two, do they bring somebody else in with Rashad Bateman? Do they spend the draft capital that they need to spend? Or is there – because I don't think there's a free agent you can add. That's the level that you need. We yeah, the, we need to see them make a move. They hopefully they look at what what the offense was and they make a move of desperation and get one of these high level talented for, wide receivers. And for sure they are going to whether that's through the draft or making a big splashy trade like some of these other teams have done. It seems like that is a priority. When Harbaugh was talking in his postseason press conference, he brought up the fact that. They're good in a lot of positions. You know, he mentioned the running back, the tight end rooms. Those are solid. He said the wide receiver room is going to be completely different next year. And I think I think the truth about Lamar Jackson is he was great until he had no weapons and got injured. Because week one, you had a 55-yard touchdown for Bateman. Week two, you had a 75-yard touchdown to Bateman. Thank Very you. nice. Week three, still had a 35-yard reception, gets injured in week four. He goes out. Uh, Mark Andrews, remember, got injured at some point there yeah. early in the season. And then, you know, it just wasn't good the rest of the way. But he is a talented I, – I agree with you. He's never going to get back to the 2019 crazy runaway number one quarterback fantasy finish. But if they bring in someone else, they get Bateman back, Andrews healthy – add a, a first-round rookie wide receiver or trade for a known commodity. Let me let me push back a little Okay. based on what we saw last year and maybe what expectations might need to be for Lamar. One thing that Mike brought up with Joe Burrow is the concern of the division, and you have that here with Lamar. You're going to play yep. the Steelers twice, the Browns twice, the Bengals twice. Mm -hmm. Those games can be slugfests, and they can take their toll. Uh, the other part is he's, he's not getting younger, right? So the rushing – Upside, you're, you've probably seen the peak of it. Mike had so many times this year he was watching Lamar without weapons, and Lamar wasn't choosing to run the football, and I don't know Correct. how hurt he was or wasn't. But last year, okay, he had weapons last year. His, his season-long pace, and I'm not counting the game he got hurt, 4,022. So 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, which I guess if you run enough and score enough on the ground, that can be okay. This year's was 3,526. So you've got 24 games now where I know that there have been some bumps in the road. But my question is, Is are we going to just jump fully back in on Lamar? Like, is he going to be a top five for you if they spend high draft capital on a quarterback or a wide receiver? He'll probably be top five in, in the quarterbacks that I would want. The nice thing is because of this experience this year, I, don't, I, I think he will be a relatively lower drafted guy. Like, I don't see him going ahead of the sixth round because of the way this season went for him coming off the injury and and you know TBD but you know that same season including his injured game he's he was adding you know you talked about 4022 he was on a thousand yard rushing pace so there's still things he can do that that other quarterbacks can't do and he will give you those week winning performances still did it this year uh you know he was number five in our in our truth metrics so I, I will be in on Lamar Jackson next year. They are another team. They let go, well, depending on – they both either quit or got fired. You can't right. break up with me situation. Uh, but Greg Roman, the OC, is out. So they are wanting to kind of revamp this offense. It will be interesting to see who they bring in, both at the wide receiver room and in the coaching position. But I, I will – you know, it's like one of those things where I would rather have wherever Lamar Jackson is drafted – sixth roundish than where Joe Burrow is going to be drafted next year, third roundish because of the running. What about a guy like Tua? Tua Tungavailoa was the quarterback 15, but his consistency rank was number nine. He had, he had stretches this season that you, you didn't even doubt that you were getting good numbers from Tua. 
You know, he had 31% good games, 15% great, 46% bust. Um, the ending of the year was rough. People figured out some of this passing game for sure. I mean, this was – they were eviscerating people in the middle of the field with Jalen Waddell and Tyreek, and suddenly they were taking some of that away, and they did not, you know, they did not figure it out over the back half. You were also on the road against San Francisco, the Chargers, and Buffalo three consecutive weeks. But look at the the schedule where Tua – dominated right that that four game uh, you know Pittsburgh atrocious Detroit goodness gracious Chicago the worst team in the NFL and Cleveland at that point in the middle of the season their defense was struggling to find themselves so, I mean he uh, he did what he needed to do which was the QB one four and three I mean, so you, I'm not taking away from there but looking at who his opponents were and then as soon as his opponents got a little bit tougher at the end of the year, it kind of fell apart. And the whole, he, I mean, to his career, I was like, what is, what's the plan for the Miami Dolphins with the, the three concussions that Tua suffered this year? And it, it, I think they're in a very, very difficult position. Yeah, he missed uh, a two-game stretch in weeks five and six and then missed the end of the year in the playoffs. Uh, he led the league in yards per attempt. So that that's something that I want to highlight just in the fact that Look, the weapons arrived, and Tua was able to step up and do something people didn't think he could do. Yeah. Um, he will be a very interesting kind of – I guarantee he'll go late. And he could be one of those guys that – like, I mean, you've been saying it now, like old school Big Ben, where you nobody takes him until late in the draft, and then you're just like, oh, gosh, somebody should have taken him. Or old Matt, Matthew Stafford used to be that way, where you're like, oh, well – yeah, he has Waddle and Tyreek, and they put up numbers, so why didn't I jump in on that? You're going to have the injury risk, but um, yeah, all the, all it the, was an up-and-down year, but you know, 3,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, and missed some time. All the great mobile rushing quarterbacks will go early in the fantasy draft, and there aren't uh, an endless supply of them. So if you don't get your hands on one and you end up late-round quarterback drafting, I want a guy – who can go out there and be the number one quarterback on a week, who has the weapons that he has obviously dealt with um, the concussion injury issues this season, but with an entire off season, he should be good to go next year. And I, I believe he'll be a decent late round pick. I mean, when you're in those double digit rounds, you're not going to usually have guys that have Jalen Waddle and Tyree kill caliber talents on the roster to throw the ball to. Yeah. And you'd hope that this team can continue to make a step forward protecting him on the offensive line. For sure. There's really only three other names that I want to bring up here on this second quarterback episode, and that's Russell Wilson, Dak Prescott, and Kyla Murray, who are 16, 18, and 19 on this list. Russell Wilson, <laughs> as you say, he's he's had <laughs> he's been the punching bag all year long for the Broncos. Was 16 here, 20th in consistency, uh, 16 passing touchdowns, 7% great games, 27% good, 67% bust. I just want to point out that was for infinite percentages higher than Aaron Rodgers in great, sure. great and good games. But Russell Wilson, it was not a uh it's not easy to watch, you know, you you have uh you can throw Cortland Sutton into the mix as a a player that's not going to, yeah. not going to be enough, right? To you know, you say Mike, you know Mike Williams or Gabe Davis. Like Cortland Sutton is hanging out with those guys in the can't take over a game category. Jerry Judy was their best receiver by far uh, uh, on the on the season. They lost Javante Williams, but you know, is Russell Wilson? Let me ask you this: Does Russell Wilson get drafted in fantasy football next year? Well, let me ask you a follow up question: Is Sean Payton the that was my question? <laughs> head coach well, for Jason, who has been. Uh, kind of just a uh, little, little foaming at the mouth, hoping that Sean Payton comes to the Arizona Cardinals. Looking at Russ, Nathaniel Hackett gets the boot, and Russell Wilson plays his best football of the year those final two weeks. You know, three of his final four games, QB3, QB5, QB2, then twice against the Kansas City Chiefs, so that's, that's not too shabby. If Sean Payton – because Sean Payton gets to go – where he wants to go, As of the teams who are willing to pay the price, which is the financial investment, and then the draft capital that the New Orleans Saints were going to require. But if he selects the Denver Broncos, that means that Sean Payton 
thinks that Russell Wilson can still play because he's not going to attach himself to a team that can't get out of – Russell Wilson is there. Like, he's going to be there for several years with the contract that he currently has. And that means that Pey – to me, that means that Peyton would be in on Russell Wilson. And you're in on Peyton. I am in on Peyton. So would you that be would, back? That would, that would mean that Peyton is in on Russell Wilson. Um, there are plenty of people way smarter than me in football that get things wrong. Sean McVay was in <laughs> on – it was it was in on Allen Robinson. He believed. You know what I mean? I I will not personally draft Russell Wilson next year as as the quarterback to go into the season with. That's not to say regardless I, of Sean Payton's home. Regardless of if Sean Payton is there. But if Sean Payton is there, he will get drafted. Like I think uh, there will be enough people out there that do believe in the the that the problem was Hackett and the system. Uh, they saw what Russ did the last two weeks without him, and they know what Sean Payton has done with Drew Brees. And they, uh, I mean, it I all just makes remember sense. Remember when Nathaniel Hackett was the perfect hire? Well, he was the perfect hire when they were trying to get Aaron Rodgers. He's who finally was... <laughs> gonna he's finally gonna let Russ cook though. Well, he, I mean, he was cooking. You know what, sixteen. Percent of his attempts, twenty plus yards downfield. That's Chef, the highest. Chef Boyardee. I mean, like Russ. What's funny is still is, goes down the field. Is Peyton, you know, the identity in in New Orleans? You know, this was a team that was the perennial every single year. We're a top five rushing football team. I mean, that was the identity mm -hmm. with with uh, New Orleans. So I would be very interested in the discussions around the running game when Sean Payton, if he arrives there, take the pressure off of a Russell Wilson. And uh, Javante coming back, do they add somebody else? That was uh, – Sean Payton was actually talking about – I think it was on Colin Cowherd um, talking about what he believes he could do to help some of these quarterbacks. And the first thing he talked about was you've got to get the running game working to take some of that pressure off. I can't I mean, remember if that was specific to Kyler or just to, to all quarterbacks. But, I mean – Think about their identity there with – the, whether it's the Tim Hightower years or Pierre Thomas or you know obviously Alvin Kamara Deuce or Reggie McAllister. Bush and Deuce McAllister and their running game was always great. If you could draft like team running backs, yep. oh yeah. I mean the Saints during that entire era were unstoppable. Dak Prescott comes in at eighteen. He was the eighth quarterback in our twenty twenty two consistency truth rank. Uh, Nine percent great games, thirty six percent good. Smaller sample size due to the injury that lost him uh, five weeks of the season. You didn't really get any of, of what you expected when you drafted Dak until week eight. Yeah, I mean, obviously missing the first chunk of the season due to injury means that he was a bad draft pick. But what the truth score of being number eight says is that he was pretty good and he helped fantasy managers once he was back on the field. The 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 thing is, is... And we, this was highlighted on the broadcast of the playoff game that he was in about how bad he was across all NFL quarterbacks, not just playoff quarterbacks, under pressure. And when he was playing against good teams, he was not very good. Um, scored, uh, you know, he was he was negative four point two fantasy points off his average against top sixteen uh, passing defenses. So this is a player that when you don't have that other receiving option across from CD Lamb. You needed a soft defense. You didn't like if, 39 for 424 and 4 from Michael Gallup. Wasn't on the, it, wasn't on a big season, fan for 424 yards from the the next man up? No, and but it Dak did show that he can help fantasy managers. I expect them to go after a wide receiver um in the draft and if they do, if they bring someone else in, I think Dak is is a 15 picks. 15 interceptions, 23 touchdowns. That yeah. is your red alert with the, what you're talking about with pressure for Dak. Is if if this was if Dak was only a low turnover guy when he had the best offensive line in football, that will create some some problems. I think they said 10 of his picks were when he was under pressure. So that that kind of that math just checks out across the board. If you don't have another uh, option to throw the ball to and you're getting, you know, rushed uh, Where's Blake Jarwin when you need him? This is what I'm saying. I mean, Mike has been saying it for years. This is what I, he's probably, I don't know, at, in the Taco Bell drive-through right now. <laughs> he's on the he's on the same cruise that uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Al, that Al's going. I'll Al talk to him and see if we can get him back to the Dallas Cowboys. Can you take care of that? <laughs> uh, of course, he, I will say though, Dak uh, like 
the all everything with the legacy chatter because when when the playoffs are going, people start talking about yeah, NFL it's high career. emotion. But here's here's the the truth for fantasy football from week seven on. One, two, three. QB seven in points per game. Like Dak Prescott was still quite solid. And week seven on is when, when he, he came, came back. back. Yeah, yeah. When he came back from the injury, he was still. He, he he was QB six over that time. He was the QB seven in points per game. He wasn't, you know, he, it wasn't the top tier, but you don't have to draft Dak to be that. And I think Jerry Jones will try his darndest to add another receiving weapon to this team. But I, I'm assuming I will be back in on Dak as a it becomes a good value because he's Dak has always been good for fantasy. He's football. always been a good value too, and obviously even this this year he was. An eighth round pick, the quarterback ten off the board. Um, there was some concern there with the departure of Amari Cooper, and you know this is a tough team too to project the kind of moves you're going to make as a reaction to another disappointing season. Kyler Murray at nineteen is the last name I want to discuss. He was the quarterback five off the board, and his consistency rate was six. So even though he finishes at nineteen, he obviously missed half the year. Number six in consistency, 45% good games. Never had a great game that was above that 26-point threshold. He got really close in week eight against, uh, I think, Minnesota. 27% bust games. Real big point differential, fantasy-wise, good defenses versus bad defenses. Almost seven points. And so that's something that I think as, as Cardinal fans and being out here in the Valley, we have seen trouble from Kyler when you face that defense that gives you the pass rush that shows you the looks that you're not able to take advantage of but I'm going to give him a pretty good grade on the year considering he played essentially what is it 10 weeks of the season and 6 of the 10 weeks was without DeAndre Hopkins and then, in this offense and then once he got Hopkins back he, he lost Hollywood Brown he, he rarely got a chance to play with lost Zach Ertz both guys so the, the weapons weren't there, and he was still pretty consistent for fantasy purposes. We, we were, I think, disappointed that he didn't have those monstrous 30, 35-point fantasy weeks, which we know for a fact he can do. He's done it in the past. You give him weapons, you give him a new offensive coordinator, a new system this year, uh, TBD on, on what the coaching staff will be and, and whether or not Hopkins is a part of this team. So I think there's some big questions going into next year about his situation there's also going to be questions about his injury he yes. should not be at full mobile rushing strength come week one so he will be a discount in the draft um, he could even start the season on the pup I think he you can't really project what it, what next year is going to be like you can only look at what this last season was like and what the situation was which was the situation was negative for him and he was still positive for fantasy because of his rushing upside. Yeah, and they'll have a, a new head coach and a new offense. So Cliff Kingsbury is in, uh, where is he? Thailand. Thailand. And um, Maybe that's where Jarwin is. Is that where the, uh, the what, what's the offense? The air raid. Is that, yes. is that from Thailand? Uh, well, it is, it's over there now. He's working it out it for his big that return. Didn't, that didn't work out, did it? No. Uh, um, my Thailand. <laughs> that's where he's that's in where my he's Thailand. At. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> uh, I, I think that'll wrap up this episode. I'm looking at the other names all the way down the oh, list. Please, Lord, you know, don't some, do it. Some quarterbacks that will be in discussions next year. Let me just say that really quickly. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with Trey uh, Lance. Uh, Matthew Stafford. <laughs> he will be in discussions when he starts the year. Deshaun Watson. Mm -hmm. Um. Will he be he who can be played next year? We'll find out. San Francisco, we'll call it. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, let's call it San Francisco. So Lance Garoppolo, uh, Purdy, whoever else they grab off the street to lead him to a title. The Seems like it's going to be Purdy, though, the, right? The one, the one thing I feel – I still think it's up in the air. One thing I'm confident about is the play of Brock Purdy has said it won't be Garoppolo. Like, that, I think that was kind of – Maybe he goes back to the team, but the, I think it's either Lance or Purdy. What if Purdy goes down in the Super Bowl and then Garoppolo comes in and leads him to a title? <laughs> Probably going to happen. 
because that would be very San Francisco. It would be and more Jimmy esque. He finds a way when he's active to play football. Um, but no, that'll do it. Uh, as I said at the top, if you have a free second and you want to go to footclanvote.com, yes, please. Uh, click a couple buttons, vote for us as the best social media content for the FSGA awards. We would appreciate it. Otherwise, Brooks, what truth is coming up on our next episode of the show? We got top 10 running backs. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't think I had enough of those guys on my fantasy team this year. It was pretty nice to have yeah. a couple of yeah. those guys. <laughs> yeah, I got you that shirt. All right, that'll do it. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.